Uh, I'm Islam Al Azazi. I'm uh, an Egyptian filmmaker, uh, and I have a screening in your festival uh, uh, about her. It's a feature narrative film. Uh, I wrote it. I uh, am a writer director. Okay, thank you. AJ again. Yeah, and my name is AJ One. I am the writer, producer, and director of Diatribe from the Village to the Streets, and I'm in Los Angeles, California. Okay, thank you. Um, Maki? Hi, everyone. I am Maki Madiba Sila. I'm a Senegalese filmmaker, and I have my film that's a musical documentary, El Maestro Laba Surfe, which uh, is about uh, one of the greatest African uh, Cuban music singer, Nemas uh, Laba who was born in the Gambia, uh, and he lived in Senegal for, for, for such a long time. Okay, your sound your sound sounds um, a bit muffled. Are you, what are you using? Are you using a, a microphone? No. No, I was just using my my AirPods. If maybe I can I can stop it. Yes, those AirPods are kind of funny. Yeah. Okay, this is better. Much is this better. better. Much okay. better. Okay. So I have my AirPods. Those AirPods are, are awful. My actually. name is Maki Madibasila. I'm a Senegalese filmmaker, and I have my documentary film in your wonderful festival, El Maestro Laba Sose, which featured the story of one of the greatest African Cuban music singer from Africa. Okay, so welcome all. Thank you very much for all being here. So uh, we're going to ask like generic questions uh, to all of you. And I, I know, you know, dealing with filmmakers for a long time, a lot of things will come out from those generic questions. So I'm going to start just because Islam, you're the first person I see on the screen and you were the first person here. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm going to start with you. So um, your, your lovely film about her, tell us a bit of how this, the story came to you or came about and how you got the actors and actresses involved in this film. Yeah. Um, uh, it was uh, um, based on, on a short story that I wrote in 2003. Mm -hmm. and it has the same title. Uh, and after two, um, a long period of trying to, 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 to do uh, two projects of, of uh, feature narrative films and I, I reached it at the end of not doing them, uh, um, I wanted to approach this film without a script. So I started to, to develop everything uh, by storytelling, by telling people about the film. And uh, by that, I was um, uh, basing the, uh, the, the narrative on uh, three literal pieces uh, uh, that I wrote before. Uh, and uh, by, by developing, developing with, with the storytelling, and then at a point writing some things and uh, doing um, a lot of rehearsals with the main actress, uh, uh, um, the project came to, to existence. And um, I've been lucky to have the production house and, uh, and then I started to, um, to make the, the, the movie. So it, uh, it started the uh, uh, um, uh, orally uh, 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 storytelling and then oh, wow. a lot of, uh, of, of writing and then a lot of uh, 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 developing and then uh, in the editing it took another turn uh, uh, and it was really organic and uh, and uh, uh, enjoyable journey uh, and about the the actors and actresses uh, the, the, the 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 main actress uh, she's um, uh, a musician oh. uh, she had a, a very little uh, uh, experience in acting or maybe not at all uh, and we uh, um, um, developed our work for two years of rehearsing uh, and rewriting also. The rehearsals comes, come to rewrite and rewrite comes to the rehearsal and, and that. And then intensive period of rehearsing with the, uh, the other uh, uh, actors. Um, uh, and the film has like four actors, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Total. <laughs> Uh, but but the, uh, the, the 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 period of rehearsals with the main actress was really uh, um, uh, enjoyable and uh, and uh, exciting. Um, yeah, um, that's it. 
Okay. Is she a is she a well known actress in Egypt? Or? Not yet, not yet. But uh, of course, she 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 um, um, now she she grabbed attention. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, but she, she was not acting at all by, by the time. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. So for AJ, I mean, I guess with AJ and Maki, so um, Islam's film is a narrative. AJ and Maki, you're both documentaries. So the question is similar. It's like, how did the project come about? AJ, yours, yours is, I saw what you were trying to do with, with that documentary. And I just thought it was a wonderful thing because people don't actually make those connections between, you know, you know dance patterns from the continent and here. Yeah. So talk to us about, first of all, is your background in dance and music? Why did you choose this particular topic? Thank you for, for selecting uh, <laughs> the film. I'm, I'm very pleased, very happy about that. What happened was I was called to be a photographer for Obo Adi's 75th birthday celebration oh. uh, for, his, for his nonprofit. And I'm a performer. I, okay. I'm I'm a I, I'm hip hop, 100 born born in it. I'll die in it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to perform. I didn't want to be a photographer, <laughs> but I took photos. And once I saw uh, the brother, he was 75 years old. He looked frail. He looked like he was in in bad shape. So I opted to take video instead because I thought since I was familiar with Obo Adi, he had been teaching drumming and dance uh, from Ghana in Portland, Oregon for 35 years. So everybody knew who he was. I wanted to learn more about him. So I took video to give them a different aspect of uh, covering him. Mm. And when I show he and his wife, uh, Susan, the, the footage, they said, we want you to come with us. We're gonna go and do, um, we're gonna do a drumming uh, session over at Lewis and Clark College. So I came over there with them and his wife right by the piano had this piece of paper that said hip hop with Crenshaw, oh, wow. May 25th. So I said, uh, Miss Ali, what is this paper right here? This uh, hip hop with, with Crenshaw. What is this, May 25th? She said, you'll have to ask Obo. So I go over to Obo and I say, Obo, what's this paper right here? Hip hop with Crenshaw. What you doing with Mike Crenshaw? He's a hip hop artist in, in the Pacific Northwest. I said, okay. what you doing with Crenshaw? He said, I, I don't know, you have to ask Crenshaw. <laughs> so I called up Crenshaw, I said, hey man, what is this you doing with Obo Adi, this hip hop stuff and you didn't talk to me about it? And he said, I, I've, been, I've been trying to reach you, man. I, I wanted to talk to you about it. And we sat down at a coffee shop and we hashed out that we wanted to tell a story. Obo wanted to incorporate hip hop into his traditional drumming and dance. I, as a, as a father, as a teacher, as a, as a historian said, we need to tell a story. We're not just gonna be dancing on stage. We need to show where that dancing came from, came from the continent. So let me take this to Obo and see what he thinks about it. So I sat down with him and he said, what do you want to do? I said, Obo, I want to come up with, uh, I want this title. I want to use this word, diatribe. Mm. He said, diatribe, <laughs> what, what, what is that? I said, it's a, it's a vicious verbal attack. When somebody's upset, they go on a diatribe. They start monologuing about things they don't like. I said, there's no greater diatribe in the world than the, than the misperceptions that we have in America, Blacks in America, with those of people that are born and raised on a continent. I said, from my childhood up until any in the continent, we all have these misper misperceptions mm -hmm. and these notions that are media driven and historically driven to have us feel ill towards each other. One thing that we get together on all the time is when that drum starts banging, mm -hmm. we're all on the one, 100%. Oh. So I brought that to, to Obo and he said, I like it, I like it, let's do it. And the documentary is actually surrounded by the fact that I was only able to get 10 minutes of footage with him. 
So anytime you see him in that blue t-shirt, mm -hmm. that's the only footage I had of him to work with because my batteries died. <laughs> and I didn't want the batteries dying to be the impetus for me not to tell his story. So at the end, I say, when he says, you'll, you'll write this, he gets a little cloudy trying to figure out what he wants to do and what he wants to say. And I say, right, I'll take care of him. And, and that's what I vowed to do was to keep my promise to him and keep my word to uphold his legacy and, and let the world know where hip hop derived from and do it in a historical fashion where you see it brothers like the, the Barry brothers, the Nicholas brothers, John Bubbles. Um, people don't really know who they are, but yes. they were doing hip hop in the 1920s, mm. not in the 1980s in the Bronx, where it was supp supposedly the uh, the birthplace. The but <laughs> we, we back a hundred years, yeah. showing brothers spinning on their back and, and everything. So that's the, that's the impetus. Okay. Wow, nice story. All right. Mr. Markey, Mr. Dakar. Yeah, Mr. Dakar. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dakar. Yeah. So what is that, that is the question again? Sorry. So how did how did your project come about? Why did you oh. choose this particular? It was quite interesting because I didn't know about the influence of uh, uh, that kind of music in Dakar. So I think it was quite interesting. So it, it makes sense that there should be a documentary about it, but why did you choose to do it? Um, okay, the main reason was I, I wanted to share the story of this, of this man, uh, his music also, because I grew up with his music. This Afro-Cuban music is the first type of music that arrived here in Africa, in Senegal, in the West Coast. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Speak. And then I, I've discovered that this music came through the, the GIs, you know, the GI, the American soldiers. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. during, the, the, during the First World War, 1914, um, 1940, uh, 19, 1914, 1918, the First World War. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, at this time, uh, Saint Louis, um, uh, Senegal was a French colony, and Saint Louis was the, was the capital of Senegal. And that's where the, the American soldiers were based. And this is the first. Uh, Let's say this is the first time that the two people they just uh, they have met, and the first thing that happened is they played this music together. It's the soldiers that are originally from Cuba that brought this music through the World War One yes. to to mm -hmm. Senegal, mm -hmm. and uh, this music is the first music that arrived in Senegal. So my parents, uh, my great grandparents, they all danced on what we call here salsa, but the real name is Afro-Cuban music. And this Laba Sose was born in Gambia. And for people who know the story of the two countries, we are same country, we are real country divided by colonialism. Yes. Like today, Gambia is a country inside <laughs> Senegal. Senegal, is, uh, <laughs> it's, so, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, we said this the accent, yeah. And I wanted to, to, to because the problem here in Africa, particularly in, in West Africa, in Senegal, but I think it, it, it opposed to all Africa. We don't know a lot about our past. Oh yeah, I agree. Not only music is the same about, the, about literature, uh, about yeah. history, mm -hmm. about everything. You can go out in the street and ask people what happened in, 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 uh, in, in 1970. Nobody knows. Like we don't have the same story like, like you guys in America. You're very fortunate that you can see uh, Nina Simone in the 60s singing and dancing, or Miles Davis playing the trumpet, or Duke Ellington, you know, or Sam Cooke, or James Brown. But for us, we don't have no archives. We don't have no images. It's like we didn't even exist. <laughs> <in the 90s. laughs> so I just wanted to, to bring back the story of this man, of this musician, of this great singer, Laba Sose, just to try to reconnect with, with our past. How our, our fathers, like our, yeah, the elders, they used to dance, what kind of music they listened, what, what was Dakar in this period. But mm. my problem is, I, 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 it was very complicated for me to have archives because we don't. We only have a national uh, um, television in uh, 1972. 
But France, <laughs> France should yeah. have, have a lot of the yeah, but, had, but yeah, I'm coming on this part because France okay. had, but from 1972 to 1980 uh, to 1990, we have no archives. We don't have this culture. Mm. So if you want, if you want to know exactly what happened in Senegal in the 1960s or 50s or 40s, you have to go to French television. Yes. Which bring, which bring us to the real problem. They ask us to pay to have our own story. Oh, our own story. <laughs> that belongs to us, you know. And for one minute, it costs one thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. It's brother. Expensive. Yeah. Yeah, brother. You hear me? I say it again. Very expensive. One minute archives. Our archives, our culture, our history, our own stuff, our, yes. our, <laughs> our heritage belongs today to the colonialists, to the, to, the, to the French state. And they ask us to pay to have, to have access to what belongs to us. So mm. this man was very famous in the 70s, so in the 60s, 70s, 80s. He could like, he traveled all, all around the world to New York. He was produced at the, at the time by the greatest Afro-Cuban music producer. His name is Roberto Torres. Um, Roberto Torres is in New York. And this man is the first African to win the gold disc. Yeah. This was in, 19, in America. In 1981, okay. he sold more than, more than 150,000 copies. Wow. At a time where, where there, was, there was no Instagram, no, no, no Facebook, no even, not, not even any connection. So I wanted, I wanted my people to, to hear about him again, to know right. his story. Even if at the end, he ended up poor, um, lonesome, yeah, lonely. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah, that's and it's a very difficult story. And we have a screening yesterday at the, at the French Institute. It was packed because now people are starting to discover his music, what kind of man he was, and of course, his, his legacy. That's why I want to tell the story to interconnect. Yes, 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 yes. So you right. seem to be very, you seem to be very passionate about African history, which you know this is why we do what we do as well. Why we've created this platform in Atlanta. You know, I don't live on the continent anymore. I'm from Nigeria, but my thing is that you know I live here, so let me bring it to the folks here. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, all right, that, that was quite interesting. So going back to Islam. Um, what were the kind of issues, challenges that you had while you were making the film? Um, yeah, uh, at the beginning, when when uh, when I started to do this project, I told myself that I have to find uh, a great actress and uh, an amazing uh, apartment. Uh, that was the main two issues. Uh, and when I found the actress, I start to make the. Um, the rehearsals uh, and about the apartment it was a long uh, search uh, but uh, I, um, uh, strangely enough the apartment that I shot, uh, shot in uh, uh, it, it was the first apartment that I uh, uh, wrecked uh, uh, in Cairo oh. uh, yeah but 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 because when when I started to uh, work on the movie I didn't have the production house with me and I was thinking of doing a part of it uh, on my own and then try to raise an, uh, uh, enough money. Uh, and I was searching in Alexandria and, uh, and uh, but this apartment uh, was ruined and it were, were, was in need of a lot of money to uh, be uh, able to, uh, to work with. So I saw it first and then I moved on to a huge period of uh, searching. And then we settled on another apartment uh, and uh, I worked with, with a great, great uh, uh, production designer. Uh, he's, he's one of the major and, uh, and the uh, um, um, uh, um, oldest uh, designers in Egypt. Oh, okay. uh, um, yeah. And well, he, he was he was really kind uh, the first that when when I approached him, of course. What's his name? Uh, Onsi Abu Sif. Oh, okay. Onsi Abu Sif. He worked with with the Yusuf Shaheen a lot. He worked with the Dawood Absaid. Dawood Absaid is, is one of the uh, mm -hmm. great directors of Egypt. Egypt uh, yeah. uh, and uh, of course, he worked with uh, he was a student and worked with Shadi Abdel Salam, who is one of the greatest also. 
um, and um, uh, um, we had they, they, we sold it on, on on an apartment and the production has made their deals and everything and in a meeting i told him okay uh, mr onsi i think uh, this apartment is, is good and and great but the other the other one that 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 we saw is um, is keep is, is in my mind and he told me look islam this apartment is good, but the other one is a universe on its own. <laughs> it's a story. So we talked. Yes, we <laughs> talked. Uh, we had we had we had a talk with the, with the producer, the uh, yeah, the finance, and uh, she was really uh, 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 kind and um, and understanding. And she said, "Okay, let's see it again. Let's try it." Although she had paid uh, down payments for for that apartment that we're leaving. Uh, and then we start working and then we start collecting a lot of, uh, of accessories from our friends' houses and, uh, and we searching for the accessories because the film based on, on 1930s uh, and uh, uh, with approach to, to Art Deco uh, era in Egypt that was really booming. Um, yeah, so th this, this was the two major concerns, the acting and the, uh, uh, the, the art design of, of the film. Uh, and of course came the, uh, the, 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 the time of, uh, of the um, uh, um, cinematography and the, the DOP that I worked with is, is really uh, good and, uh, and nice. And, uh, and he had this idea uh, because we, we, we were shooting that the whole film is in the daytime uh, and we were shooting at night all the way mm -hmm. to have a long hours of shooting. So he had this idea to have like cranes uh, uh, going from the roof and going down with the lights to have the uh, daylight coming. The illusion of daylight, the, okay. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people commented on that, oh. that very, very lighty and uh, lighty house that has this sorrow and grief in it. Yeah, so... Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting story. Um, so to you, AJ, what kind of... So what I was curious about with your documentary was the footage you used. Did you... How did you get that footage? And um, the, 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 what were the challenges in... Because I know with documentaries, documentaries can kind of come together organically. Like while you're shooting, things come, come up. So... Just speak to us about, you know, the B-roll you use, the stock footage you use, and then the challenges of, of filming. You're not getting out of here in 30 minutes. You know that, right? <laughs> well, we have to. We have like 15 minutes. You're not getting out of here in 30 minutes. <laughs> summarize it. Summarize it. So, so Mr. Mr. Dakar, this is, this is really important. I want you to hear this because I want to do something to help you. Mm. Over here in America, a lot of our work in the 20s and 30s in what's called uh, the race film era. Uh, Soundies and, and different films made from 1920s to the 1940s, which were exclusively made, produced, directed, and starring Black people. These films are not readily accessible. Mm -hmm. They're in archives like with Paris, like in France. They're in these, in these archives where they're just tucked away and they collect dust and they feel that no one's interested in it, it's not gonna make any money. So what me and a, a brother in North Carolina, uh, Dr. Spinks, what we did was over a 15 year period, we collected the largest black digital collection in wow. the world. And wow. we have a nonprofit called the Department of Afro-American Research, Arts and Culture. Oh, wow. It's, it, it's oh, under, okay. I want you to take this down, it's, it's Dirac, D-A-A-R-A-C dot N-G-O. And we have a digital archive of thousands of films, uh, music, all kinds of recordings, because we felt even here in America, yes, we, we know our history, but we're not able to see and not touch and feel yeah. our oh. history. Yeah. Right. So we have the same challenges that you have over there. We're not paying $1,000 for a minute but mm -hmm. we're not even paying anything because we don't have access to be able to get it. So there are, um, there's, there's public domain that we have access to. There are different registries and, and 
colleges and institutions that have a lot of this footage. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that footage came from our archives. We have, oh, okay. we didn't have to ask permission. Uh, nice. The challenges that I had, the, the challenges that we had was Oboe wanted to have this performance. Diatribe was really a musical stage production. It wasn't supposed to be a documentary. Mm -hmm. I was establishing a, a, a relationship with him we were, we were building as, as men. I was getting information on, on how it was for him growing up in Accra. I was telling him how it was for me growing up in LA. And we got together in Portland, Oregon just for this moment in time to create this movement. And then three months later, he, he was taken away by a liver cancer. So oh, sorry about that. once, absolutely, once he passed away, then his spirit, and his encyclopedia and his history kind of went on with him. And it was left up to me to continue the word I said I would give him. So uh, the challenge was, I gotta do this on my own. Mm. I gotta do it. I'm not gonna say because he passed, well, well, let me see if the family's gonna help or let me see if Portland is gonna give me some money. No, I had to make the investment in being able to keep my word with him and create something big so that folks can see and hear that story and then hear our story because we're brothers like uh, Mr. Dakar. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Madiba, Madiba. You can say Madiba. 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 Oh, Madiba. Oh, your first Madiba. name is Madiba? Madiba. Like uh, Mandela? Maki Madiba. Maki Madiba, okay. Maki Madiba. Oh, you can call me Madiba. 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 Okay. So uh, that's that's what the challenge was, was uh, not allowing myself to uh, be defeated by the challenge. I had to, to exceed it. So there it is. OK. So passing the baton to you, Madiba, your challenge uh, is? It looks like our, our, our story with Mr. L.A. What is it? C.J.? T.J.? <laughs> You're Mr. L.A. He's Mr. Dakar. <laughs> right. A.J. AJ. I, AJ, it looked like our, our story um, a little bit, uh, have some similarities. Very much. Yeah, uh, because uh, it's like I'm, I'm seeing myself what, what, what you're trying to explain, to explain because we have the same challenges. Because my problem with this film was how to get the archives. Right. So uh, I traveled to, to, to Ivory Coast, where I got like the, the first TV show from of, of La Basse, it was in 1969. What, what do you mean, TV show? La Basse, he, he did a TV show in 1969. His oh. first TV show appearance is in the movie, it's in the film, mm -hmm. where we see him uh, singing. And this oh, oh, okay, this, 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 okay, yeah. I remember that bit, yeah, I, I okay. Know, yeah. The, yes, I was in the, at the TV uh, in, in Ivory Coast, um, is this someone told me, oh, Labasose, last time I was just checking the archives and I saw him singing. But this mm -hmm. is very old. This seems to be in 1969. I said, what? Really? Oh my God, I've been looking, I've been searching, I've been everywhere. I really did. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah it's somewhere, I, I have it. I, I said, oh my God, this is unbelievable. And then, yes, like that, there it was. The first TV appearance of Laba Sose. Wow. Was 20, the first. Was 20, yeah, first. The first wow. time. It's the only one. It's the only footage of Laba Sose in 1969 in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. Wow. Mm. <laughs> and I said to myself, okay, this must be a sign. Because at this time I was I was about to quit. <laughs> wow. I'm not a quitter, but at the time I was like, I didn't have any money. You know, I was alone in this project and people thought I was crazy. You know, and yeah, this, this footage gave me so much hope. I was like, okay, then maybe this is a sign from above. This is a sign maybe from Laba Sose, who yes. told me, okay, listen, buddy, <laughs> don't quit. I need you to tell my story. So keep on going, keep on looking, keep on searching. And then, yeah, at the end, I think you will make it. But this, this, this particular time was very important because in the story of Laba Sose, because he used to leave, in Ivory Coast. He lived in Ivory Coast for almost 14 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And in the in the in the film, you can see his, his wife, uh, which is an, uh, uh, 
this is an actress, Teresa Taba. Um, in the film, uh, she accepted to talk. Oh yes, I remember that part. Yes, yes. Yeah, that part. Mm -hmm. And now there was a, like a fight between the woman that he had in Senegal and the woman <laughs> that, he, that he had, because Laba Sasa was a womanizer to speak. He, he has many kids all around the globe. Even until today, people are writing us on the Facebook, Facebook uh, page of the film to say, oh, uh, I'm very happy that you did this film about my father. I say, oh, but who are you? I say, oh, <laughs> not <a> mother. <laughs> I'm his son or I'm his daughter. <laughs> until today. Until today, wow. Until today. And yeah, um, most specific, specifically, I wanted to, again, to share the story of the, this man, his music. And until today, his music is very popular, but we, we don't know a lot. We don't know much about, about his career and why he ended uh, the way that he, yeah, the way he ended yeah. poor, and which is, uh, the, which is the ending of most of the Senegalese artists. Um, so I wanted to, to put on the table um, this debate too, for the people to see, okay, maybe something is wrong. If all our musicians at the end of their lives they have to go and beg, then maybe Terrible. it's because we don't yeah. protect them. Right. Maybe we right. don't give them the opportunity to excel. You know? It's also the, it's also the, it's also the situation on the continent. With, you on know, the continent. Yeah, the, yeah I, I, I think the instability, all of that plays a part in these kind of things. You know, you know like in Nigeria, there's a huge university. I mean, there are many universities in Nigeria, but there's this one university, which was the first university in Nigeria in the 60s, University of Ibadan, has lots of archives. But because of, you know, all the stuff that goes on with the government, there's one time they burned down the archives. There's one time, you know, I mean, things happen that shouldn't be happening in this day and age, but they do because of the nature of our government. You know, it's it's here too. This is, I was very frustrated not to be able to show my people how they look like in the 60s. Can you right. imagine? That's very, very frustrating. So kids today, they think everything happened, everything started in the 2000s. <laughs> and, and people are asking me a um, question like, oh, okay, I saw the film, so it's very moving, but this man, does it really exist? It is a fiction. I said, come on, man. It's oh, wow. Show. Yeah. People are asking, oh, but how come he was so famous and he traveled to the United States? He, he went to Cuba. And wow. what really happened? Yeah. And this is the connection between the two generations or the three generations because I'm 44. But I've, I was still curious to know about the life of my parents. And here too, there's no transmission. There's no like people don't talk. It's like we, we don't question our parents. Everything is, is, is here in Africa. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't talk. Yeah, gonna, I agree. You cannot come and, and ask your father, or uh, yeah, dad, when you were 16, 18, yeah, I, I bet you had girlfriends. Or then he'll, you know, he would slap you in the face, you know, because these <laughs> are questions. Yes. Well, are that's questions why that, yeah. the work that we do is very important because we, we are the archivists now. That's the that was my goal. Do. My yeah. goal was to, to, again, to show what happens during this period of time. Yes, that we that we do, that we ignore so much. What kind of music? How people they used right. to dress? Um, right. What was the the mindset of this period? You know, how come this music um, so popular and now it's going so down? Because uh, last thing uh, to say is that all this generation now they're trying to I mean they disappear because they they are very old and even in the movie five people that are in the film are dead. I can believe that. Yeah. We, yeah. Be, even before I go and pass production, you know? Wow, <laughs> before you yeah. complete it. Yeah. Yeah. And this music before Dhaka, if you ask people uh, from Nigeria, and one of the saxophonists is from Nigeria, Dexter Johnson. Okay. In the film, we, we mentioned his name. Yeah. He's from Nigeria and, he, and he, he left Nigeria and come to Dakar and stay here, you know? And Dexter Johnson was a magnificent musician. And this man too, it, only with Dexter Johnson we can make a film. So all these generations, they, they are dying one by one and this music doesn't exist anymore. This African Cuban music yes. is all like on a decline. So nobody is playing this music anymore. It's very, very, very rare. So I wanted to, to fix it on the heritage to, to keep it so people they will know 
or they will understand that, okay, this is part of our, of our heritage too. Yes, yes. All right, so we have like 10 more minutes. I want to quickly talk about budget. So, um, Islam, yeah. how much did your film cost? I know filmmakers don't like talking about this, but you want to give <laughs> us an idea where you got the money from, how you got funding? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know exactly, but but I think it's it's like um, um, five um, Egyptian pound millions. So it's like um, uh, um, like three hundred thousand dollars, maybe or four hundred thousand dollars, which is um, yeah, which is which is which is fair enough for for a, an art house film in Egypt. Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course, a lot of us, uh, a lot of people that worked with not full uh, uh, fees, uh, and um, yeah, uh, and yeah, it, it's an independent way of doing things. But the major thing was uh, that we're doing a period film, so some money has to be spent. Uh, and uh, yeah, and and the uh, and the producer was was really generous about that and really understanding about the artistic aspect of, of that uh, of that thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and AJ, you, I think you mentioned that yours was self-funded. Was it all self-funded? Yes. Oh, wow. I haven't even, I haven't even logged in the, uh, I haven't uh, clocked in the hours to know how much time I spent, but yes, I, I self-funded it. Okay. So, I, I, I mean, how, how long did it take to actually complete from start to finish? It took, he passed in 2012 and right. I, I didn't know what to do. I moved from Portland to LA where I was born and raised. And I woke up in 2019 and said, I told him I keep, I keep my word. So I just got up, I gathered everything on the hard drive that I recorded over time and put all that footage on the timeline and took that 10 minutes that I only had and said, how can I create a documentary, a message? Out of the 10 minutes. <laughs> around the 10 minutes. So um, it took it took about seven years. From start to finish. Well, you did a good job with that. You're taking out, you know, creating a story from that 10 minutes you had. That was a good job. Um, okay, can, can I ask the question? How do I say the last name, uh, Madiba, of Labi? Labi, how do we spell that? I want to figure out what's the, is it Sostre? How do we say, uh, how do we spell the last name of the musician that you oh, Why did you put it in the room? Laba Sose. Do you want to type it in the chat? Um, okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I want to I wanna learn more about him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because those those kind of stories, I, I, I know quite a few documentary filmmakers that are doing this. Um, there's a, have you heard of the, there's a documentary called Elder's Corner by a, a guy I know, and he went around Nigeria recording all the old time artists. Yeah. And like you, Madiba, as he was recording them, they were dying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But he went all over Nigeria. Went to because you know in Nigeria, I can say the regions in terms of music are divided into four. So you have the north, the south, the east, and the west. And the sounds are very different. The sounds from the north are very different from the sounds like like Afro beats really comes from the western part of Nigeria. Okay. Right? The northern part of Nigeria, it's, it's it's like the northern part of people where you're from, uh, Madiba. You know, it's kind of Aousaish, so the sound is different. But anyway, he mm. went around documenting. So I think our work as filmmakers now, you know, filmmakers of African descent, our work is cut out for us because there are a lot of stories that haven't been told. You yeah. know, there definitely yeah. are a lot of stories that haven't been told. But anyway, I, I, I want to try and wrap up. Um, so budget, um, Madiba, budget, where you got the money from? Yeah, it's like, um, let's say $35,000. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, and I, yeah. I put my money on the table here, yeah, of course, because nobody wanted to, to, <laughs> to, to like to finance. It's only at the end um, when this is crazy. When the French news they start understanding what I was trying to do, and they invite me on the TV show, and they were like, uh, I had some articles and newspapers, 
And it's only then my country, my country said, oh, if the French are talking about this, then this, this must be interesting. Right. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's very sad, but, but, but that's what it is. And at the end, I received like a, a subvention from, from the FOPICA. Uh, Majila, I don't know if you have heard of the FOPICA in Senegal. It's like basically the, the, the home of, of the cinema here. I think it, yeah, it sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. The Popica, and then they, they give. Is that like a funding? Out. Is it a funding? It's a funding. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, a fund. yeah. it's a cinema fund. Yeah, and they yeah, they help me with with ten thousand dollars. So okay. altogether, it's thirty five thousand dollars. But I put my own uh, twenty five thousand dollars with my colleague Lionel Boki, yeah, on the table so we can. Okay. Yeah. So what are, what are your plans for distribution, Madiba? Yeah, for now I don't have I don't have any, <laughs> any plan. Because this is my first first feature film, you know, it's my first documentary film. Uh, because I, uh, I, I'm a singer, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm a really okay. artist, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but I was so passionate about this story that I wanted wanted to share, um, yeah, to the world. And now it's it's traveling. Uh, thank you for for for, uh, for for taking it for your festival, and it will be shown in New Zealand too. Uh, yeah, in Rwanda. Uh, um, the, the, I, I have a screening. Uh, I'm flying to Paris next next week. Oh, next week. Sorry, this Sunday, this weekend. Wait, okay. Because, uh, the, the, uh, there's the African Week in UNESCO, and they wanted to share the story of this man so that the people nice, nice, how nice. how important uh, this story needs to be to be to be told. Yes, yes. So, but but I would like to have uh, like contacts in the US uh, and and find a distributor, whether it's a platform or Whatever it is to do, yeah. Okay. Sure okay. You, you got a contact in the US right here. Pop, pop, pop. Yes, brother. <laughs> right. uh, and the uh, thing is, I'm, 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 I'm the Madiba of LA. Of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, need, we need to talk after this panel. We need to talk. 100%. Yeah. So exchange, exchange info in the chat and we will send out an email afterwards, after the festival. But Islam, your plans for distribution. Is it being distributed right now? Um, I'm assuming it's not, is it? You have yeah, a it, it, oh, yes, you have a distributor. You have no, a... I'm not. Do you? No, no, I'm, I have a distributor, yes. I have a, I have a distribution company, and they're working on, uh, on, on selling it. And, uh, okay. But, but we're showing it first in, uh, in festivals, and then we, uh, we're planning to have, uh, a, like, uh, uh, um, a theater screening. Okay, uh, but but it, usually it's it, it's it's very short for art house uh, films, uh, and then to have it on a platform maybe or something. Okay, and lastly AJ, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap up. We have four more minutes. Aim uh, the aim with Diatribe is to get that bad boy over to the continent, and I want to get it into the as as many as the fifty four, uh, as much oh, of the fifty four <laughs> nations as I can get there. Right, I want to do a, a, a world uh, a world tour, but the the uh, reality is, I've got about five or six more festivals to close. There's been 32 film festival invitations. Nice, nice. nice. And I'm <laughs> happy to be. I'm so happy to be in Atlanta. That's like a, a second home for me. Oh, I to be there, so next year I'm coming. Amen. Yes. One hundred percent. I'm coming there. I'm just gonna get my hug and uh and watch the whole festival for the two weeks that you'll have it, right? Or maybe a week. Well, I mean, right now it's three days. It's three, three days. days right now. Yeah. Ooh. We're in the second Ooh. year. We're in the okay. second year. So we're growing slowly, gradually. Um right. so that's what's happening over here is uh we'll we'll see what happens once the film festival season uh ends and then we'll move on with the next initiative. Okay, so my Deepa just shared his details. So if you guys want to take that. Um, so my last question for everybody and anybody can start is upcoming projects. What do you have going on? Islam? Yeah, um, um, strange enough, my upcoming new project that I'm thinking of and I was working years before is music also because I oh, have- Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I have this wow. idea because oh, Egypt has, has oh, wow. a lot of diversity in music. Yeah. Actually, you have the Sahara, the desert, the uh, the 
the north, the, the, it, it's really diverse and very ancient. Ancient, uh, yes, and, yes. Yes, I, I'm not talking about uh, major cities like Cairo or Alexandria, but if you go and you travel, you find a lot of interest uh, music. Uh, so um, I don't know how it's, it's going to be. It's like a documentary or like a documentary series. Uh, I'm still working on it. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit influenced and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I'm used by you guys. <laughs> So you're exploring the different sounds coming out from the different regions in Egypt? Oh, yes, and, and also instruments, because there is a lot wow. of instruments that still used like, like now. If, if, if now you have instruments that you, you have it on the walls of the of the pharaohs, uh, still right. used now. Yeah. <laughs> wow, my, my first love is music. So anything music, yes. I, I just... Cinema you know. and music goes very well together. Yes, yes, they do. Music and film. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Madiba, you have anything coming up? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm working on my second film, um, which is uh, um, the story of of the of one of the greatest soccer player from Senegal. You know, he 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 is the first black man to be the 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 best scorer in a championship here in in Europe in France. What's his name? This was in, in 1980 85. Uh, uh, he, but yeah, unfortunately, what's his name? He, his name is Jules Francois Bocandé. Okay, Jules Francois Bocandé. He's the same generation like the Stefan Keshi. Okay, uh, okay. He was very good friend with 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 Keshi. Okay, and he's the first black soccer player to be uh, the the um the best scorer, goal scorer in a championship in in, in Europe. This was in France, 1985, 86. Okay. And yeah, he passed like uh, 10 years ago. Um, he, he's from the South, he's from my region. He's kind of, he's like my, my childhood hero. He hero. was like our okay. childhood hero. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This was far, this was before the DJ Drogba, the Samuel Eto, the, the, you know. Drogba. Like, <laughs> There's a whole yeah, song the, the about big, Drogba. The, the big soccer players, Nigerian soccer players, you know, like, about Femi Martins and beat long, long, long before them. And he was victim, he was a lot of he was victim of racism, you know, and on the pitch, people used to spit on him and because of the color of, of his skin. So I wanted to tell his story too, because I still my 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 job is uh, my work is to try to to reconnect yes. the two generations. And all these people, people they tend to forget. You know, I'm like uh, I want to bring all these figures. Uh, whether they are like in sport, in music, or political figures, you know, to remind us that we have a story. Okay, and then AJ, because we have to wrap up now. It's twelve oh one. This is the whole it. reason. This is the whole reason why Die Tribe was created to bridge the gap, so I can connect with uh, Brother Azazi and and Madiba. This is the purpose of of what Die Tribe is. There wasn't a soundtrack. Everyone loved the music in the documentary and I said again, what do I need to do? I'm an artist, rapper, poet. Why don't I just create a soundtrack? And one wasn't enough, so I did two. So there's 32 tracks, uh, volume one and volume two on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all streaming platforms. It's called Diatribe, From the Village to the Streets. Okay. And I'm doing, I'm doing the majority of the tracks and it's just about oboes come up how i came up and how we connected to create this movement uh in what diatribe is so if everyone is is interested it's it's out there yeah we're going to check it great out. yeah okay all right this i knew this was going to be fun i felt it <laughs> <laughs> uh, i have my number in there too i want you yes, to yes, see yes, i had it so yes, yes, I, yes. Islam, yeah, I got your number, sir. Okay, I'm gonna let me just save this. I'm gonna save the chat. Right, Madiba, I got yours too. So yes. WhatsApp, you 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 do WhatsApp, right? Yeah, yeah, I do WhatsApp. Every yeah, I do African WhatsApp. in the world does WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, exactly. That's what it is. All right, all right. Let's ask you number two. Sorry. I need your number two. Let's ask you. Yes, I, I, I have it? my number in the chat. In there. Oh, okay, okay. Right, right. right. Yes, I've saved it anyway. So when we send out the thank you emails, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll include it. You said this was going to be live. Did you enjoy yourself? 
Who, me? Yes, absolutely. Of course, of course. I, I knew, I felt it. You know, at the beginning, I said, oh, I can feel this is going to be fun. Because, <laughs> because I think it's the music. Right. Music is very dear to me. Music is very, it's my first love, really. And then film, second, but music, because I've been right. a DJ since I was about 12. I've been DJ. Music is very, it's like my soul. So, Wait till you hear this music. Okay, okay. All right, so on that note, um, this was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Islam. Thank you very much, Thank AJ. you very much. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. This is Thank recorded, you. so it will be on all our right, I'll talk to all. The, I'll talk to the both of you later. Yes, yeah, sure. All right, bro. It's going to be on our YouTube right. channel. Definitely. Definitely. And um, our website is africanfilmfestatl.com. We have the yeah. film screenings from today to Sunday. Oh, Everybody yeah. I'm watching both of the enjoy. movies, too. Sorry? Right, I need to watch both of the movies as well. Excuse me. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I, I, talking I, over you. I'm so happy. I, 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 I don't want to be impolite, but uh, I, I want to watch both of the movies. I'm going okay. To watch yes, yes. Did you all get your all access, your filmmaker passes? Did you get them? No, I didn't. I, no, I didn't. No. Yeah, I think I looked at the email. Check your email, it. please. They were set up like last week. <laughs> Yeah. Check okay. your email. If you didn't get it, just email us because we're, we're, we're checking emails regularly. So, but okay. we sent out filmmaker passes to all the filmmakers. And a yes. few people have emailed me to say they got it. So you must have received it. Maybe you just need to okay. check your email. If you haven't, just respond to any of the emails that we sent you and we'll take care of you. So, on that note, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of thank your you. day and thank enjoy the rest of the you. festival. Okay? Bye, thank guys. You. Sorry. This right. this um Wait. this conversation will, will will be on Facebook on YouTube. It's gonna well, it's on YouTube. It's on Facebook Live, so it stays there. But it's being recorded, so it's going to be on our YouTube channel. So okay. if you go to African Film at African Film Arts Foundation YouTube channel, or just go yeah. to our website. Let me just put it here. Let me let me put it in the chat. So uh, yes, please, yeah. Or even from the festival web website. So if you go to the African Film Arts Foundation .org, and from there you can get to our YouTube channel. So you will see everything yeah. done from last year, like our um, monthly screenings. The uh, in you know we have a whole bunch of stuff. Just knock yourself out. We have a whole bunch of stuff there, and this will be there probably by end of next week. Okay. So it was wonderful speaking to all of you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes. And we hope to see you in Atlanta next year. Please come to Atlanta yes. next year. We'll be there. Okay. Bye. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.